The Great Ayton Community Archaeology Project. We've been running since 2002, and at the moment we're halfway through a five-year project looking at uh, the way the village looks like, why the buildings there, who used to live there in the past, what they do at work, what they do at leisure. And we're trying to involve as many people as possible in the village in doing this research. So we have 40 or 50 people. We cover an enormous range of history. We've got um, Allen Works, we've got Einstein Mines, we've got Windstone Mines, we've had weaving in the village, we've started the leather tanning industry, enormous amount of stuff. We're still finding more and more and more and this morning I've been speaking to two people who know an enormous amount about particular subjects which interest us so we'll be able to follow that up after the uh, after today so it's uh, really been worthwhile coming. Hi I'm Jill Hovell and we're part of the Iron Age New Leather project here. We've actually been digging in Dacre, up on Dacre Top uh, for several years now. We've been given a grant by the Heritage Lottery Fund. We've got Iron Age settlement, we've got Iron Age workings, we have Iron Age slag. We're delighted to be here today and head out into those hills and see what you can see. My name is Dave Hunt, I'm chairman of the Clare Community Archaeology Group, based at Nesborough Castle. Um, we're a group of about 20 people and we look at the heritage uh, and the archaeology of the area and at present we're working in the village of Scriven, which is just outside Nesborough. Um, there is an old hall there, um, it has been occupied since 1100, um, obviously various buildings uh, and now we're doing research into this area and we have a grant from the Hockey Fund for about five years. Uh, we're Yorkshire ancestors. We're based in Everston between Fukrin and Scarborough and we have a family history research centre. We, from the library, we have a lot of the books that are in the library, uh, rare books on CD, and we sell a lot of other family history research books. Uh, we do carry out family history research for other people if they don't want to do it themselves, although we try to encourage people to give them a start. Um, we do uh, classes, two hour kickstart classes twice a month. We're a group of uh, about 100 people, um, not all of them meet every month, but we have a monthly meeting, we have a monthly newsletter, and we simply look around the village to see what we can see and see what we can find. On May the 16th, on the Sunday, we have an open day in Catrick Village, where we take the main concert room of the Catrick Social Club, and we cover at least 28 tables with information about the village. Um, we did it about three years ago, and at least 100 people were through the hall on that occasion. We're also in preparation for the 600th anniversary of St Anne's Church in two years' time. So there'll be a, like a dry run, if you like, of information about the church, hoping that will again stimulate material information for 2014. 12, 12. No. We're Midland and Dale's local history group. Yeah, we've been going for about four or five years, based around Midland in Coverdale, but we cover most of the Yorkshire Dales as well. Joked non-members for the princely sum of three pounds, uh, obviously free to members. And you wish to join us, our annual subscription is only ten pounds a year, and you're welcome to join. I'm Peter Braithwaite of the Rydale Family History Group. Uh, we meet uh, on a monthly basis in various locations around Rydale, such as Helmsley, uh, Kirby Moorside, Pickering, Malton and Hovingham. And we have a research room in the Village Hall of Hovingham, uh, which is open every Thursday for uh, people to come in and research their family history. Uh, we have banks of computers which are linked to the internet and we offer, aim to offer expert help to, uh, to those who wish to come in and research their family history.
the History Society here deals with all of the medieval to recent history. We're involved with everything from the original Saxon settlement through the Norman development of the town through the Scots Wars, in particular of course the Battle of the Standard which took place just outside the northern edge of the town when the Scots army was soundly defeated and sent home. We've been very much involved with all the uh, medieval and industrial development of the town right up to the most recent changes taking place in the High Street where we're studying the Victorian yards many of which have now been incorporated into properties and you will see some of those on display today. There's been, been some fascinating uh, insights into the early records of the town. One in particular I like myself is the story of the vicar being prosecuted for misusing the common land north of the town by uh, fencing it off, and putting his own cattle on it, harvesting the hay, making haystacks, all of which were illegal. And he was fined the handsome sum of 20 shillings for all his misdemeanours. and I'm the curator of the Swelldale Museum, which is a volunteer-run uh, museum in Reith, uh, which opened in 1973. And uh, we're here today, it's really nice to take part in this event because we've got lots to do with the local Swelldale and Art and Gartel heritage, from archaeological features right the way through to collecting things from the 1960s and 1970s. Uh, so we've got lots to do with lead mining and domestic sort of social life. We've got a really big archive for family history and local history and uh, we've got some various publications from uh, our friends group on uh, house history and Methodism and dialect and um, we've got lots of satellite groups, we've got an archaeology group called SWAG, <laughs> Swaldale and Art and Garter Archaeology Group, we've got a dialect and oral history recording group, we have a knitting cafe um, and once a month our friends group has lectures. Um, so we're a very active bunch and uh, we hope we'll see lots of people as a result of participating in this day. Okay. I'm David Rivers and I look after the archaeological work that is part of the Ripon Local Studies Research Centre. We've been working for around eight years now studying Ripon City and the surrounding parishes and finding out an enormous amount of archaeological information that has not been known before. We really didn't know what we let ourselves in for when we started work. Um, we have so far, during this eight year period, added over 3,000 new pieces of archaeological information to the county database because everything we do we write up in a standard format and then give it to the county office so that that information is available to the general public. Information is useless unless we share it and that is always our intention.